Assalamualaikum everyone. Welcome to another lecture at O Levels Pro. We are doing O Levels Chemistry, and we have been discussing uh, one of the most important topics uh, in this syllabus, which is moles. Uh, we covered uh, around 60 to 70 percent of the moles in the last lesson. In this lesson, we are going to discuss the concepts of percentage yield and uh, limiting reactants. But before that, uh, let's practice some past paper questions from the component one from the component mcq type questions okay uh, so that that will give you a quick recap of what we did uh, in the last lesson as well as they'll help you apply the concepts that you learned to p1 type questions okay so let's go to that uh, question number one is pretty straightforward you need to calculate the mr i don't need to do this with you now you need to know one thing you need to know one thing is that uh, the mole ratio of gases is equal to the volume ratio of the gases what does that mean it means for example if i say that nitrogen and hydrogen and let's say ammonia are in um, 1 3 2 ratio okay they are this is their mole ratio in terms of moles they have this ratio if i say that then you should know that in terms of volume they would also follow the same ratio let's say one mole of nitrogen will occupy one mole of nitrogen will occupy uh, 24 decimeter cube one three three moles of hydrogen will occupy uh, 60 72 dm cube volume right and two moles of ammonia will occupy 48 dm cube volume which can be reduced to the same thing if i if i have to reduce them in the simplest ratio, I have divided by 24 and you will get 1, 3, 1, which is exactly the same as their mole ratios. So, you can actually use the mole ratios to calculate the volume of uh, volumes of gases. For example, if I have this equation, nitrogen is reacting with hydrogen to form ammonia, right? If I know, if I tell, uh, if, if they tell you that uh, 10 dm cube of nitrogen is uh, is reacting what will be the amount of ammonia that is being formed so you know that there is one ratio two moles so volume will automatically be 20 dm cube why because you followed the same ratio same mole ratio okay volume will also form the follow the same mole ratio now let's look at this question what is the volume of nitrogen formed when measured at the same temperature and pressure as the ammonia Okay, you need to calculate the volume of nitrogen and they told you that uh, ammonia is 1 dm cube if ammonia is 1 dm cube then uh, since they have 2 1 ratio in terms of moles they have a 2 1 mole ratio so they'll have a, a 2 1 volume ratio as well so if the volume of ammonia is 1 dm cube the volume of nitrogen will be 0 0.5 dm cube the answer would be b okay question number three Using the periodic table for relative atomic masses, which has the least mass? 0.1 moles of silicon dioxide, you just need to calculate their masses. You will do what? Mass is equal to moles into MR, you will apply this formula. We have already done this in the last lesson. Uh, so you just need to check that which one has the least mass. It is a bit tedious to do. So I hope you will do it yourself. How much sulfuric acid is required to neutralize this much of NaOH? We calculate the moles of NaOH. Calculate the moles of NaOH, right? How much is the moles of NaOH? Uh, it is uh, 100 divided by 1000, 100 divided by 1000, multiply by 1. So the answer would be 1 over 10 or 0 0.1. 0 0.1 mole is the moles of sodium hydroxide. So uh, the moles of uh, sulfuric acid would be accordingly 0 0.05. Okay, now you'll have to check uh, with this information that uh, uh, using this all of these information you will calculate the moles of H2SO4. Okay, the option that gives the answer 0 0.05 will be the answer of this question. Moving on to another question. Okay, so uh, 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 a volume of ethane has a mass of 20 grams. 
what is the mass of an equal volume of protein you cannot compare mass and volume but you can compare moles and volume so what would you do you will calculate the moles of ethane first moles of ethane would be uh, mass is 20 grams and uh, c2h6 would be 12 into 2 plus 6 30 so 20 divided by 30 would be uh, 0 0.33 20 divided by 30 would be 1 over 2 over 3 and 0 0.66 will be the moles of uh, ethane right now what is the mass of an equal volume of propene okay you need to calculate the mass of an equal volume of propene so you can actually uh, use the fact that uh, the mole ratios of gases are equal to the volume ratios so you can actually uh, use it for volume as well okay so 0 0.66 moles let's say is uh, of 0 0.66 moles of ethane is going like it's occupying let's say 0 0.66 dm cube volume so uh, propene will also be occupying 0 0.66 dm cube volume so he is asking you about the mass for equal volume we'll just multiply 0 0.66 by its mr okay because equal volumes are being used you can just uh, use it uh, for propene as well so you multiply it by 42 which is the mr of propene and the answer would be 28 grams answer would be c so empirical formula you already know how to calculate it the answer would be a because it is approximately 50 50 percent so it is pretty straightforward okay you haven't done this yet what is the concentration of a solution containing 1 gram of sodium hydroxide in 22 and 250 centimeter cube of solution 1 gram of sodium hydroxide in 1 gram in 250 centimeter cube solution ok you need the units mole per dm cube we have grams and centimeter cube let's convert this into moles first so 1 divided by 40 mass over molar mass would be 0 0.025 moles of NaOH right and it is in 250 centimeter cube of solution converted into decimeter cube 250 divided by 1000 would be 250 divided by 1000 would be 0 0.25 so you have 0 0.25 dm cube now divide 0 0.025 by 0 0.25 so 0 0.025 which is the moles per dm cube is 0 0.25 mole per dm cube ok so the answer would be 0 0.1 mole per dm cube ok this is this is the similar question we did in, uh, that we did initially sorry uh, in an experiment a 5 mole sample of sodium hydrogen carbonate is heated we have 5 mole sample ok uh, which volume of carbon dioxide is measured at room temperature and pressure if it is 5 moles then carbon dioxide would be 2.5 moles as per the ratios and 2.5 moles of carbon dioxide will occupy how much volume Two, 1 mole occupy 24 2.5 will occupy 70 well, okay, 60 cent decimeter cube 2.5 into 24 would be uh, 48 and 60 dm cube the proton number of an element is x which means the 6 electrons and then proton number of element y is 9 ok 6 electrons means electronic configuration is 2 4 this means electronic configuration is 2 and 7 so he is asking you uh, what is the formula of the compound of these elements so this might be carbon this might be let's say chlorine so ccl4 seems to be uh, the right way to go ok answer would be D 2 4 and 2 7 right what is the concentration of the acid you know how to calculate the concentrations of the acid now uh, what does this equation indicate two atoms of hydrogen combined with two atoms of oxygen no four atoms of hydrogen combined with two atoms of oxygen two gram of hydrogen combined with one gram of oxygen not really no Two moles of steam can be obtained. Yes, two moles of steam can be obtained from 0.5 moles. No, one mole of oxygen. Two moles of steam can be obtained from one mole of oxygen. That is correct. Okay, so these were some P1 questions. Now we are going to move to the main topic for today, which is the first one is percentage yield. 
परसेंटेज जीर Okay. First thing that you need to understand about yield is it is the output of a reaction. And what is the output of a reaction? That are products. Okay. But the formula of percentage yield is equal to uh, actual yield, actual yield over theoretical yield. Actual yield over theoretical yield. Actual yield is is always less as compared to theoretical yield because theoretical yield is what uh, have, is the amount of product that must have been formed that should have been formed and the actual yield is the amount of products that are actually formed so the things that actually happen uh, are much lesser as compared to things that are actually planned okay for example you must be planning to get a lot of marks right but you uh, eventually get uh, much less as com much less than what you predicted Okay, so the what things that actually happen are going to be uh, less efficient as compared to things that are planned actually that are planned originally. Okay, so in theory, products that must have been formed will always be greater than the products that are actually formed. Okay, the products that are that should have been formed are the theoretical yield. Okay, and theoretically you will always have to calculate, which is nothing but mass. Which is nothing but mass. The way you calculate mass, you are actually calculating the theoretical yield. If uh, in in the last lesson we talked about how do we calculate, we were calculating masses of various compounds. You were actually calculating theoretical yield of those compounds. Okay. The uh, but the actual yield, as far as the actual yield is concerned, it will always be given to you. It will always be given to you because actual yield is found experimentally, and since you are doing this question on paper and not uh, doing the experiment yourself so actual yield will always be given to you okay so whenever they ask you to calculate the percentage yield of a particular product they will always give you the actual yield of that product how will you know that this is the actual yield of the product that would be in grams okay now let's let's do the question okay let's do the question first okay now let's say we have this question when a sample of 13.5 grams of tin oxide is reacted with oxygen, 12.7 grams of tin oxide is formed. Okay, tin 4 and tin 2 oxide. Calculate the percentage yield of tin 4 oxide. You need to calculate the percentage yield of this oxide. To calculate the percentage yield, you need, you need actual yield and theoretical yield. Like I told you, actual yield will always be given to you. Okay. And what would that be? They would be. It would be given in the answer. You can see that you have 12.7 gram of tin 4 oxide is formed. They have told you that this much is formed. That is your actual yield. This is your actual yield, and you'll have to calculate the theoretical yield. Okay. And theoretical yield is nothing but mass. You need to calculate the mass of tin 4 oxide. The first thing that you need to do uh, in any most question was what? you will be required to calculate the moles from the given information okay uh, so given information is of tin 2 oxide because this one is actual yield so this is not up for grabs you cannot use it to calculate the moles of tin 4 oxide just identify that this is actual yield it is only going to be used at the end of the question when you are calculating percentage yield so so moles will moles of tin 2 oxide moles of tin 2 oxide tin 2 oxide is equal to mass over MR its MR would be so stanix MR is 118.7 plus uh, the AR of uh, oxygen is 16 so the answer would be 134.7 and when you divide it divided by 134.7 the answer is 0 0.1 moles of tin 2 oxide so, uh, whatever is the moles of tin 2 oxide are going to be the moles of tin 4 oxide because they have equal ratios. So, uh, moles of tin 2 oxide uh, SNO2 would be the same as well. You know the moles? Now you can calculate the mass of tin oxide, which is nothing but theoretical yield. Okay, the mass that you calculate uh, in the question is always the theoretical yield of a product 
whenever you are calculating the mass of one of the products you are actually calculating the theoretical yield of that product that would be moles into mr 0.1 into mr its mr would be uh, there is one extra oxygen there is one extra oxygen uh, there are two oxygens over here so uh, it would be 32 16 and 32 answer would be 150.7 multiplied by 0 0.1 and you will get 15.07 15.07 grams that is the theoretical yield now just calculate the percentage yield now that would be actual over theoretical actual is 12.7 always less than the theoretical divided by theoretical yield multiplied by 100 and you will get this answer 12.7 over 15.07 multiply by 100 which is 84% 84.2% is the percentage yield ok let's do another question mm -hmm. a factory uses 100 tons of ammonia each day to produce 160 tons of nitrogen monoxide ok you don't have uh, equation for this particular reaction ok just just know that whenever there are tons you will have to convert it into grams and all you have to do is you multiply it by 10 to raise power 6 and it will be in grams so here you need to calculate the percentage yield you are given the actual yield of nitrogen monoxide and you need to calculate the percentage yield of nitrogen monoxide this is the actual yield ok and you will calculate the radical yield from the question itself Okay, now let's do this question first. And calculate the mass of barium sulfate that could be made. When you are calculating the mass of barium sulfate, you are actually calculating its theoretical yield. Let's do that. So, first thing first, you need to calculate the moles of barium nitrate, which will be equal to moles of barium nitrate is equal to 20 divided by 1000 multiplied by 0 0.55. So the answer would be 0 0.011. 0 0.011 would be the moles of uh, barium sulfate. Okay, barium nitrate. Sorry. So what would be the? Uh, you need calculate the mass of barium sulfate. So whatever is the mass of whatever is the moles of barium nitrate, they are going to be the moles of barium sulfate as well. So barium sulfate will have the same moles. As you can see, okay, 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 0 0.011. You need to calculate the mass, so you have to multiply it by MR. Mass of barium sulfate would be 0 0.011 into its MR. MR would be 233 multiplied by 0 0.11, 0 0.011, and you will get 2.563 grams. 2.563 grams of barium sulfate. Now, they told you that a uh, mass of 1.92 gram of dry barium sulfate was obtained. So now they told you the mass of the product that was obtained, it has to be the actual yield. Okay. Now they are asking you to calculate the percentage yield of barium sulfate. You would do what? You would just simply divide the actual yield 1.92 with the theoretical yield which was 2.563 multiplied by 100 and you will get the answer equal to mm -hmm. so my calculator is messing it up ok 74.91% 74.91% would be the answer ok uh, ok now these are another type of question that uh, they ask you they do not ask you to calculate the percentage yield, instead they give you the percentage yield. So what do you do with that? Now, they told you that barium carbonate is reacted with this much HCl. The first step would be to calculate the moles of HCl, which would be 40 divided by 1000, multiply by 1.5. And the answer would be 0 0.06 moles of HCl will be there, 0 0.06 moles. You need to calculate the mass of barium chloride that is prepared from barium carbonate. You know the HCl's moles, 
barium chloride moles will be half of those of HCl. So barium chloride moles would be half of it 0 0.03 moles. Okay. Now you need what? You need to calculate the mass of barium chloride would be equal to would be equal to 0 0.03 into MR of barium chloride is barium's atomic mass is 137 plus 71. The answer would be 6.24 grams. Okay, they told you that after purification, the percentage yield of barium chloride was 75 percent. This is the the mass that you just calculated was what was actually theoretical yield. Okay, and they gave you the percentage yield. Okay, now you need to calculate the mass of barium chloride prepared as in that what is the actual yield? He's asking you about the actual yield. All you have to do is we'll have to multiply the theoretical yield with the percentage yield. We'll just multiply it by 0 0.75. And you will get the answer. So 6.24 multiplied by uh, 0 0.75, the answer would be 4.68 grams. So there are these type of questions that come in exams as well. Uh, first, you calculate the mass as normal, and the given percentage yield is then multiplied by the theoretical yield to get the mass required. Okay. So I think that I think you got the gist of it so far. You can do this question as practice. Okay. Uh, okay. Now let's let's discuss what are limiting and excess reactants. But before that, you can actually uh, use this question as a practice question. Pause this video here and try to attempt this question. Okay. Uh, you are given the percentage of glycolic acid. You will be required to calculate the mass in grams. You will calculate the theoretical yield from methanol, and then you will just have to multiply it by forty-five percent of point four five. Okay. 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 Let's discuss now limiting and excess reactants. Limiting and excess reactants. As the name suggests, limiting reactants are those which are limited in amount and excess reactants are those which are excess in amount. Okay. So, let's discuss their significance. Uh, limiting reactant is the one who decides the amount of product. It decides the amount of the product or it decides the yield of a product. Okay, because it is smaller in amount. You can actually uh, apply this concept in your daily life as well. Let's say, let's say you have three steering wheels. You have three steering wheels. Steering wheels of cars, I mean. Steering wheels and eight tires. Okay, then how many, how many cars can you make from this? How many cars can you make from this? Okay, you can make maximum of two cars from this. Okay, you can make maximum of two cars from eight tires and three steering wheels. Even though you have an extra steering wheel, but it doesn't make it. It doesn't have any contribution because the tires are eight. So basically, the tires are smaller in number. They are controlling the. They are controlling the yield here. They are controlling the output. Okay, because they are smaller in number. For example, if you go out with friends, uh, the restaurant that you choose is actually decided by the person who has the least amount of money. If you, all of you are pitching in equally, all of the, all of your friends are pitching in equally, then the person, then the friend with the least amount of money will, is going to decide actually uh, that which restaurant are you going to. He is going to decide how much are you all going to spend because he has the least amount of money. Okay, so that's how it is. A limiting reactant controls the yield of the product. Now, how do you identify limiting and excess reactants? Let's discuss those questions. But before that, I need to discuss a, me a method of unit conversion with you. A method for unit conversion. Often when we are converting units, even though we know the relationship between two units, we actually forget whether to multiply or divide by a particular number. Right. Let's say I find I know that one mile is equal to 1.4 kilometers. Right. I need to convert 750 kilometers into miles. So it gets confusing that whether I'll divide it by 1.4 or whether I'll multiply it by 1.4. There's a simple method for this. Okay. I draw this chart sort of a thing. The, this is just this is just a fraction. Okay, I'm just writing a fraction in, in a fancier way. Uh, the, the numbers above this line are numerator, 
and the numbers above below this line are all denominators. So I need to convert kilometers into miles. And I know the relationship that one mile is equal to 1.4 kilometer. So I'm going to relationship, I'm going to write the relationship such that kilometers cancel out and you get miles. Okay, I need to calculate that how that 750 kilometers is equal to how many miles. So I need the unit miles and I want to cancel the kilometer unit. So I'll write the unit such that I know that 1.4 kilometer is equal to 1 mile. I wrote kilometer in the denominator intentionally so that kilometers cancel out and you are left with miles. So you divide 750 by 1.4 and you will get the answer. So 750 divided by 1.4 will give you 535 miles. Okay, that's how you convert. Let's do another example. Let's do another example. Let's say I'm, I have to convert 10 centimeters into meters. 10 centimeters into meters. So I write 10 centimeter. I draw that same uh, chart sort of a thing. Okay, now I know that 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeter and I need to, I need the units of meter. So I'll say that 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeter. I wrote centimeter at the bottom so that they cancel out. So 10 divided by 100 is 0.1 meters. Okay, now let's do a bit more complicated version of this. Let's say if I ask you to, if you study physics, you must have to convert um, kilometer per hour into meter per second. For example, you need to convert 50 kilometers per hour to meter per second. What will you do? Again, just write it like this. 50 kilometers per hour. Right? So, I need meter in the numerator. So, I know that 1 kilometer is equal to 1000 meters. Is equal to 1000 meters. Right? So, kilometers will cancel each other out. And you are left with meter at the top in the numerator. And you need seconds in the denominator. So, you will write that 1 hour has 3600 seconds. R will cancel out. So, you are left with the number 50 multiplied by 1000 divided by 3600 meter per second. So, the answer would be 50 multiplied by 1000 over 3600. The answer would be 13.88 meter per second. Okay. Similarly, let's say you want to calculate, uh, they ask you, um, they ask you that uh, the 50 grams per centimeter cube of sodium hydroxide, of sodium hydroxide, convert this into mole per dm cube. Mole per dm cube. So what you'll do here, 50 grams per dm cube, okay. Now I need moles in grams, I need moles in place of grams in the numerator. So I know that one mole of NaOH, one mole of NaOH is equal to 40 grams, 23 plus 16 plus 1, okay. So I'll write strategically that one mole of NaOH as 40 grams, so gram will cancel out. And I need, I need, so this is centimeter cube, this is centimeter cube. I need decimeter cube in place of centimeter cube. Okay, so one decimeter cube has 1000 centimeter cubes, so I will write accordingly that one decimeter cube has 1000 centimeter cube. So centimeter cube will cancel out. So you are left with 50 multiplied by 1000 over 40 mole per dm cube. So solve this question, you solve this fraction and you will get the answer. I hope you got this method. Right, now we are going to apply this method to calculate limiting and excess reactants. So question number one, a student added this much grams of magnesium to 30 gram of propanoic acid. Which one of these reactants, magnesium or propanoic acid is in excess? Now how would you do this question? The first step again is to calculate moles. So Moles of magnesium would be 4.8 divided by 24 is equal to 4.8 divided by 24 is equal to uh, 
sorry, taking a bit of time. 0.2. 0.2 is the moles of magnesium. And uh, what would be the moles of propanoic acid? Moles of propanoic acid, moles of acid would be 30 grams divided by its MR, its MR would be C2H5COOH, C2H5COOH. So uh, 12 into 2 plus 5 into 1 plus 12 plus 32 plus 1. The answer would be 74. So 30 divided by 74, the answer would be 30 divided by 74, the answer would be 0 0.405. They are the moles of acid. Uh, moles of acid. Now, uh, these are the available moles. Which moles? Available moles. How are you going to find out if a particular reactant is in excess? You need to check, see, uh, if, uh, if the available moles of a reactant, if the available moles of the reactant is more than the required moles of the reactant, then that reactant is going to be in excess. And if the available moles of the reactant is less than the required moles of the reactant, then it's going to be in limiting amount. Okay, so these, so what you calculated, what you just calculated were the available moles. Required moles are calculated from the equation. And how are you going to do that? You are going to use the same unit conversion method. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to calculate the required moles of both magnesium and the acid. Now, let's calculate the moles of, required moles of magnesium. So, to finish off all the acid, how much magnesium is required? That's the whole point. To finish off all the acid, how much magnesium is required? So, so all of the acid is how much? All of the acid is 0 0.405. So, 0 0.405 of acid. All of the acid. How much magnesium is required? So, you, you will write the relationship such that moles of magnesium remain at the end. So, when there were one mole of magnesium, there were two moles of there were two moles of acid so the so acid will cancel out you will get 0 0.405 divided by 2 you will get 0 0.202 moles of magnesium 0 0.202 moles of magnesium okay so now just now going going inversely uh, now to finish off all the magnesium, how much propanoic acid is required? To finish off all the magnesium, how much acid is required? So all of the magnesium is 0 0.2 mole magnesium. How much acid is required? So you will keep acid in the numerator while uh, writing the relationship that uh, 2 mole of acid, 2 moles of acid uh, are reacting with 1 mole of magnesium. So magnesium moles will cancel out. 0 0.2 multiplied by 2, the answer would be 0 0.4 moles of acid. So they are the required moles. Now check one by one. Okay, now required moles of magnesium, required moles of magnesium is more than the available moles of magnesium. So magnesium is going to be in limiting. Magnesium is going to be limiting. Okay, and uh, moles of acid, as you can see, uh, available moles of the acid is 0 0.405 and required moles is 0 0.4. So available is more than required, so acid will be in excess. So you, they just ask you which one is in excess. You will say that uh, uh, propanoic acid is in excess, and you'll also have to explain it. You will say because because available moles because available available moles of acid. Which are how many? 0 0.405 are greater than are greater than required moles. Are greater than required moles, which were 0 0.4. Okay. So its next part is calculate the number of moles of hydrogen and the volume of hydrogen. So you you can calculate the mole of hydrogen. You have moles of magnesium as well as moles of the acid. But you you will only use the moles of the limiting reactant, which is magnesium. So you use the moles of magnesium to calculate the moles of hydrogen. 
which will be the same 0 0.2 and uh, using that you can calculate the volume of hydrogen because it is equal to volume over 24 so volume will be equal to n into 24 you calculate, calculate uh, you will multiply that moles with 24 you will get the volume in decimeter cube okay okay so uh, again another question which reactant magnesium or hydrochloric acid is in excess use calculations to explain your answer so again you will calculate the available moles first the so moles of magnesium moles of magnesium will be 0 0.24 is the mass divided by 24 the answer would be 0 0.24 divided by 24 the answer would be sorry 24 divided by 24 0 0.01 0 0.01 moles of magnesium and moles of HCl would be uh, 5 divided by 1000 multiplied by 2 5 divided by 1000 multiplied by 2 0 0.01 both have the same moles okay so these are the available moles of magnesium as well as HCl now let's calculate the required moles now to finish of all the magnesium to finish of all the magnesium how much HCl is required so all the magnesium is 0 0.01 mole now how much HCl is required you need you are calculating how much HCl so you will be doing what you will be making sure that you are left with the moles of HCl so 2 moles of HCl 2 moles of HCl is reacting with 1 mole of magnesium so you are left with 0 0.01 multiplied by 2 the answer would be 0 0.02 so 0 0.02 moles of HCl is required to finish off all the magnesium ok now going to the other side to finish off all the HCl how much magnesium is required so all of the HCl is 0 0.01 mole HCl how much magnesium is required so you are going to keep magnesium in the numerator so 1 mole of magnesium is reacting with 2 moles of magne 2 moles of HCl ok so an HCl cancel out you are left with 0 0.01 0 0.01 divided by 2 answer is 5 into 10 to raise power minus 3 uh, which is actually 0 0.005 moles of these are the moles of uh, magnesium 0 0.01 divided by 2 ok 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 now uh, these are the required moles here now uh, available moles of magnesium is less than the required moles of magnesium so magnesium is going to be in excess magnesium is going to be limiting available moles of magnesium is less than sorry this is the moles of HCl sorry 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 available moles of magnesium is actually more than the required moles of magnesium available moles of magnesium are actually more than the required moles of magnesium which means that magnesium will be in excess magnesium is in excess you will write magnesium is in excess because its available moles its available moles which are mention, mention the moles as well so they know that what you are talking about 0 0.01 is greater is greater than required moles is greater than required moles uh, which is 0 0.005 calculate the mass of magnesium chloride that can be formed in this reaction you need to calculate the mass of magnesium chloride for that you need moles of magnesium chloride so you have the moles of magnesium as well as HCl but you will use the moles of HCl because HCl is limiting why HCl is limiting because the available moles of HCl is less than the required moles of HCl so 0 0.01 moles of HCl then uh, magnesium chloride will have half of these moles and using those moles will calculate the mass of magnesium chloride moles multiplied by 
MR. I hope you'll do it. Okay. Now, um, uh, you can pause the video here and you can solve this question for practice. This is all from the chapter of moles. I hope that you got it. Uh, we had two videos. There were around 80-84 minutes of uh, discussion on moles along with some past papers. I hope that you grasp the basic concepts right. And inshallah, I'll be back with another video and we'll be starting with the syllabus of O3. Okay. Until then, see you later. Allah Hafiz.